please rise, remove your caps, and join me in welcoming Kayla Hedman, class of 2014, who will lead us in singing the Star Spangled Banner. Please remain standing for the invocation. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Please welcome Laura Dagan, Chairperson of the Board of Trustees. Thank you and good morning. On behalf of the Champlain College Board of Trustees, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome each of you to the 135th commencement of Champlain College. Champlain College is a place of contrasts. While our founding in 1878 places us among the more venerable institutions of higher learning in America, we don't carry the burden of bureaucracy that can impede institutions that have been in existence for well over a century. Champlain has nurtured its ability to adapt quickly to market forces and to institute new programs that will provide our students with the most relevant education. While we are rightly proud of this, we remain mindful that pride in our accomplishments is best tempered by nurturing, nurturing the agility, creativity, discipline, and willingness to change that has enabled us to adapt with such success in our first 135 years. That spirit, spirit of innovation and optimism links the college both to its origins and to its future. It will guide us as we look to new challenges that will test, will best position our graduates to take advantage of emerging opportunities in the marketplace. Today, we will present honorary degrees to two outstanding individuals whose contributions through public service and writing make them particularly deserving of the recognition. But we also take great pride in watching you, the members of the class of 2013, become graduates today. We extend to each of you our heartfelt congratulations and best wishes for a healthy and prosperous future. Now, let us take a moment to give thanks for the blessings of this beautiful day as we gather here for Champlain College's 135th commencement to celebrate and acknowledge our students, all of you, your great accomplishments. We give thanks to all of those who have supported the members of the graduating class of 2013 and sacrificed for them on their journey here. Let us all heed the experience of those who came before us we may be the wiser from what they have learned. May we offer a helping hand, a kind word of advice, 
and a moment of peace to those who follow us. We ask for the patience and guidance to help to step humbly and respectfully in the world. In the years ahead, we ask that our actions be tempered with grace, wisdom, and forethought as we strive to make our world a better place. Amen. Please welcome Robin Abramson, Provost and Chief Academic Officer. Here now, in the presence of candidates for academic recognition, members of the faculty and administration, alumni, trustees, honored guests, and friends of Champlain College, the 135th commencement is hereby convened. Ladies and gentlemen, David W. Winslow, Jr., Class of 2000. stand up here today to let you know that you are ready. As a Champlain College graduate, because I can tell you're ready because of the education you received here at Champlain. Rather than bore you with my life story or pontificate in the distant past, I'd like to showcase le the last year of my life and the journey that I've taken and let you know why you're ready. Not for a job, not for a career, but rather life. But before I start, I'd like in a moment to give President David Finney an energetic round of applause because in a few short years, <laughs> in just a few short years, David has elevated this college to unforeseen levels. And not only has he given us immense value and our investment into the college, but he's given us the hope to achieve whatever we set out to accomplish, locally, regionally, nationally, or internationally. And I'm honored to speak at one of the final graduations before David Barks on yet another adventure. So David, thank you again. I'd like to start with opportunity. A year ago, I worked for, I, I currently work for a company, dealer.com, and a year ago, we had an opportunity to evolve a relationship with an iconic American brand and help them drive success to a new era in the American consumer market. The brand is Chrysler. With a short notice and little expectations as to what the future would lead, we helped Chrysler revitalize their American line of products for the consumers through their dealership base. Ironically, I'm standing next to a professor that 13 years ago first got me into the field of advertising. And I want to let you know that you are ready with your degree to embark on in any career that you choose so to do. Adventure. Immediately following that opportunity, I packed up my family for a trip to Spain where I had an instructive master's course in digital marketing in the heart of Madrid. However, before we could start our journey, we needed to make a decision. My three-year-old daughter woke up at three in the morning very, very ill. That triggered my wife to get very ill as well. So we had a decision that in three hours we'd either leave to New York City to embark on our journey, or we'd have to stay behind and I'd have to go solo. We made our descent, landed in Barcelona, and after a successful flight, we traveled throughout Spain, and I instructed a course to students from over 20 nationalities for IE Business School. For me, it was another chapter that was written my kids would travel internationally years before I would ever myself. And I was an international professor at a master's program. 
coincidentally, without a master's degree of my own, just with a degree from Champlain College. You are ready for adventures such as this. Probably the most important of all is change and your willingness to be adaptable to the life ahead. Less than a month from our return from Spain, my family and I packed up for a cross-country journey to move from Burlington, Vermont to Los Angeles, California to pursue my career and give my family a load of fun. As they enjoyed the beaches and discovered the love of my life, we brought two beautiful kids into the world in our home here in Burlington and carried them out to California for the past year. Although our home will always be here in Vermont, you will never know where your career will take you and you have to be ready for change. My degree from Champlain followed me from Burlington, Vermont to Los Angeles, California, and I don't know where the future will lead as well, but I can tell you, you are ready for this in your career. And lastly is perseverance, and I can't say enough for it. You've persevered through years to get your college education. In the past year, I've taken 50 trips and traveled over 100,000 miles and embarked on one of the most challenging trips to date. When I was asked to speak here today, I had a decision to make because I would be in Sydney, Australia two days before. So just two days ago, I departed from Sydney and made it here to Burlington less than 24 hours later. I get to spend the day with my family on the beach and then landed in Boston where I had just been two weeks prior as the tragic events unfolded before us. Challenging it was, but I've made it here today and I can't say how proud I am to share my story with you and let you know that all of this I have done with a Champlain College degree and an insurmountable amount of perseverance to get where I am today. I advise you to take every experience you've ever had at Champlain College, embed it into your everyday life and take it with you no matter where you go. What you learned at Champlain and what you experienced here in the community of Burlington, Vermont will be intrinsically within you and give you a foundation like no other. You are ready for all the adventures that life puts in front of you. You are ready to be a leader, a visionary, and a contributor to your community in every form. You are not, you're ready for a career, not just a job, and you are ready for life. But let us not forget the people who got us to where we are today, your family, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your mentors, and your closest friends. Today, my parents sit in the audience to support me over a decade after I graduated from Champlain College. They were my main support then and remain so today. Mom and Dad, I love you. And remember this, today you carry with you another family, one that has prepared you for the world ahead and one that will be there just as your family was to get you to this point. You are part of the Champlain College community forever. So I leave you with some parting words. Eat well. My wife's a nutritionist and reminds me every day. <laughs> Live life to the fullest. That's all I can ever say. And love unconditionally. And thank you for persevering to get your college degree from Champlain College and making the world a better place. Thank you, everyone. Please welcome Nicholas R. Puglisi, representing the graduating class of 2013. Champlain College, class of 2013. We made it. Can you believe it? It's been a long four years. For some of you, five. <laughs> even six. And now that journey is at an end. One door is closing, while another, more daunting door, opens. The fear of uncertainty is one that we are all affected by. But if our education at Champlain has given us anything, it is the tools to meet this uncertainty head on. George R.R. R. Martin wrote, 
A mind needs books as a sword needs a whetstone, if it means to keep its edge. If there's one thing I've learned here at my time at Champlain, it is to stay on the cutting edge. Champlain has always been on the cutting edge of new technologies, keeping us ahead of the curve and always having the tools of our trades readily available. We are truly given all the tools that we need to succeed in any area that we've chosen to study. And not many other schools can say that with as much confidence as we do. So what good is a graduation speech without a little motivation? I'm going to tell you the secret of making any goal, whether big or small, possible. How many times have you heard someone tell you, follow your dreams, or if you set a goal for yourself, you can achieve it? There is some truth to these statements, but what no one tells you is how. No one ever tells you how to reach your dreams or how to take that first step. But before I tell you the secret, I would like to preface it with a story. One about how I came to this point and how I learned about tangible goal setting. My mother has been and continues to be the most amazing person in this world. I say this because growing up, I didn't have a typical childhood. When I was four, my father passed away from a sudden heart event. Just like that, everything changed. She was left alone to raise my brother and me all by herself. My dad always surrounded himself with good people. We were lucky enough to have his best friend, John, come into the picture for us and be a father figure. A few years down the road, John turned to dad and became our father for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Between the both of them, I've had the best upbringing possible. Mom, dad, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for everything. Both of them are always keeping the memory of my late father alive. Whether it is through stories, pictures, or memories, his spirit still lives on. Recently, my mother gave me a book titled Pick Four, Zig Ziglar's Legendary Goal Program. With this was a note attached that said, Nick, your dad was very big on making goals for himself. I thought you might like this and could give it a shot. You never know. Love, Mom. So I figured, why not? I have nothing to lose. I believe this book is the secret to making any goal possible. And here is how. Step one, brainstorm. Make a list of any dream you might have, big or small, real or fake, get it all out there. This brainstorming of goals helps you put into perspective what you want to accomplish in both the short and the long term. Step two, think. Think on each of these dreams or goals and react to them. What would happen if this actually came true? If you can't write about why you want to reach this goal, cross it off. After narrowing down your list, narrow it down some more. Step three, pick four. Pick four goals you would like to pursue. Take these four ideas and expand on them. Think about how you and the people you care about most can benefit from this goal. Get it all out, because now starts the real fun. Step four, just do it. Every day, only on business days, for three months, try to do something related to each of your four goals. Whenever you complete something related to one of your goals, write it down and keep a log of all things associated with your goals. At the end of each day, reflect upon what you did and write whether it was helpful in reaching your goal. After the first week, you start to learn what works after reflecting on your activities. A few weeks later, you fall into a routine, and before you know it, the goals you've set for yourself have become involuntary, and you are leaps and bounds from where you started. At the end of the program, you've reached your goals, and these goals have changed to accomplishments. These accomplishments act as the fuel to setting more goals and having the confidence to make things work. I have participated in this goal program, and look where it got me. <laughs> Any goal we set for ourselves is possible. All we need to know is how to take that first step.
My time at Champlain has been the best four years that I could have asked for. I have met incredible people and have made connections that I truly believe won't end in a few hours when we all say goodbye. These are truly memories that I will not forget. Before I go, I would like to leave you with a quote from the doctor. If it's time to go, remember what you're leaving. Remember the best. My friends have always been the best of me. Champlain College, class of 2013, good luck and thank you. Please welcome President Finney. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome members all of the Champlain College community. We are gathered here to honor 450 members of this Champlain College class of 2013 here with us today. Congratulations to all of you. Yeah, yeah, you can applaud that. Now before the mood becomes too celebratory, I want to pause for a bit to remember some people who are not here. Like many here who attended college back in the 60s and the 70s, you graduates have watched members of your generation fight an unpopular war. Popular or not, the sacrifices that have been made and that continue to be made reflect our soldiers' courage and commitment to this great country. In my eight years as president, this is the second commencement in which we have not been at war in Iraq. We rejoice in that. But our servicemen, yes. Our servicemen and women remain in Afghanistan. As of this past week, 2,207 of those serving in Afghanistan have made the ultimate sacrifice. All of our lives are diminished as a result. So could you please stand as we pause for a moment of silence to honor those who have served, and in particular, those who have fallen. Thank you. Please be seated. It is especially gratifying to see so many of our distinguished faculty here today. As you graduates know full well, Champlain's faculty are passionate about teaching and learning. They all take delight in recounting stories of when this or that student grasps a particularly difficult concept. They love to make a difference in the lives of their students. It is a privilege for me to call these committed professionals my colleagues. Now, I've been around colleges for a long time. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's this. Not one of today's graduates got here alone. All of them received the support and encouragement of someone close to them. So I would especially like to salute the families and partners and special friends who supported these graduating students. Please stand up so we can applaud you. She's glad you do. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you, and thank you for the sacrifices that you have made to have your graduate here today. 
Now this is a day that continues a long commencement tradition here at Champlain. But even as we continue to celebrate the achievements of our graduates in classic Champlain form, this year we begin a couple of brand new commencement traditions. The first is that this is the first commencement ever outside here under the tent at Edmonds Field. So among members of the class of 2013 are those who began in 2009, which means you were the first class to attend Champlain College all four years with the statue of Samuel de Champlain up on campus. We erected it in the summer of 2009, just before you arrived. To pay homage to our namesake, this year your student government is instituting the practice of giving each graduate a replica of old Sam's spy cuts. Made in Vermont of Vermont Cherry, it's beautiful. We hope it will be a lifelong memento of your time at Champlain. I encourage you to keep it in your various offices as your career unfolds. As the years go by and each graduate receives this memento, the odds increase that you will one day walk into a colleague's office and spy the spy class a new beaver bond will have been formed. <laughs> All right. When you arrive at Champlain, it's a beautiful sunny day, August 28, 2009. I advised you on that day to do three things. Play hard, work hard, and serve. I know that you have done all of that and more. The faculty, staff, and I are proud of you. You've learned a lot, and in the process, you've grown and you've developed. You leave Champlain a different person than the insecure high school graduate or transfer student that arrived here. Work hard, serve, play hard was the advice. I offered up that advice because I knew that various pundits and journalists would be writing about you at this time to talk about how ill-prepared you are for the world. My feeling then and now is that if you followed my advice, you would indeed be ready for the world. How well did you do? Well, in terms of work, nearly half of you already have work lined up starting in the next few weeks. You interned at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and turned your role into a full-time position. You completed the CPS program online from California. You focused on your studies even though your family remained in the Congo, but they are here today to celebrate this milestone with you. You put Champlain College on the radar of some of the biggest professional conferences in the world. You helped local businesses solve marketing challenges ranging from engaging customers on social media to e-commerce fundraising. You interned at various technology companies programming everything from navigational systems for anti-aircraft missiles to AAA video games. You ventured into entrepreneurship by building high-quality games and developer tools, then published them for sale on the Xbox Indie Games Marketplace and Unity Asset Store. You engaged with world-renowned experts at the Financial Accounting Standards Board on current issues facing the profession. With this knowledge in hand, you presented a four-hour technical update to local CPAs and other business professionals as their final examination. You founded a snowboarding magazine, edited four anthologies, and designed an interactive ebook based on Dante's Inferno. You began your associate's degree in 1981 with Di Augusta as your dorm mother, and today you have persevered to receive your bachelor's. You created a game and companion curriculum for the United Nations to address violence against women and girls, 
that has now been played in over 120 countries. You created a game for the Ford Foundation to teach rural communities how to build and maintain wealth. You helped define the artistic and technical direction of a graphic novel and game concept for a best-selling Vermont author. You brainstormed ideas in the emergent tech space for clients such as Money Magazine, Design for America, Microsoft, the State of Vermont, Echo Lake Aquarium, Ben & Jerry's, the Ford Foundation, and Xerox. You created games for children with cystic fibrosis to help and encourage them to do their vital daily breathing exercises. You taught elementary age school children and watched as comprehension lit up in their eyes. You were awarded an all expense paid internship in China for the summer of 2013. You were the first Champlainer to attend graduate school at the Thunderbird School of Global Management and you completed a certificate in global management there. You created a new record for the most internships completed at Champlain ever, having completed seven. You were honored at the Art at Work in the Creative Economy event this past year for your remarkable academic and work achievements in which you successfully integrated the arts and business. You successfully branded Fiddlehead Brewery and helped to fund an apiary on campus through in-class projects. You kept going online to finish your classes so you could graduate today, a special day because your son is also here graduating. You founded the Lodge in the IDX Student Life Center and sold more Mountain Dew than this campus has ever sold before. <laughs> Am I worried about your work ethic or you finding work? No, I am not. You have already demonstrated your capabilities. How about service? How did you serve during your time here? You have been orientation leaders, resident assistants, tour guides, peer mentors, and peer advisors. You donned aprons and chef's hats to compete for the title of Iron Chef. You helped dream mentor children. You volunteered with middle school students, teaching and inspiring them. You were designated as Volunteer of the Month at the King Street Center. You were awarded both the Director's and the Eugene Gaiotti Awards in Criminal Justice. You developed a proposal for a service learning class in Gambia, West Africa, and were awarded a travel voucher to travel this summer to make in-country arrangements. You developed a skateboarding program for kids in Burlington. You created a website to serve and connect families who have older loved ones suffering from dementia. You attended local networking functions for web analytics and helped Vermont Public Television address digital marketing challenges. You organized an event to have students create over 100 handcrafted fleece blankets for Hurricane Sandy relief. You took action on issues of child soldiers and rogue army atrocities in sub-Saharan Africa. You helped plan and implement Ireland when you were studying abroad in Dublin. It has now created 6,000 jobs in Ireland. You were an invited guest to the White House in 2011 for the monthly White House Community Leaders Briefings. You convened with nationally known media professionals in a monastery to find ways to make the world a better place through media. You served in the Army Reserves and National Guard. You provided one-on-one -on -one academic tutoring to English language learners. You have prepared tax returns for those in needs of assistance. You have camped out in the frigid cold to call attention to issues of homelessness and to raise money for cots. You have made meals at the Ronald McDonald House. Am I worried about you making the world a better place to live by serving your communities? No, I am not. You already have. The third piece of advice, absolutely, you should be proud. The third piece of advice was to have fun. How'd you do with that? I know. You have made the Student Government Association a more effective voice for students. 
You have used your time here to make lifetime friends and have fun. You lived and studied successfully for a semester in France, or China, or Ireland, or Montreal. You held League of Legends tournaments, spending your time achieving useful goals like owning all the champions. <laughs> you managed to not become a zombie semester after semester. You passed the torch on to the next generation to ensure the human versus zombies tradition continues. You ice climbed in Smuggler's Notch. You acted in Champlain Theater's productions, short works, and in Hamlet. You greatly expanded your collection of t-shirts by attending Spring Meltdown and other student life events. You planned and participated in four snowballs. You planned and participated in rail jams. You competed in the Burlington Bash. You promoted, marketed, and indulged in breakfast and lunch at Candy's. You have experienced the wonder of wings over Burlington, Alibaba's, Nectar's, and Church Street. You shared your music, poetry, and artistry at the grind. You have eaten way too much pizza, way too many wings, and you have played way too many video games. You ski and skied and rode the front four flat out. I hear that your skill in bowling is an embarrassment, but I still hold out hope for you. You have had a wonderful time of discovery. Am I worried about your ability to have fun and live a life full of joy? No, I am really, really not worried about it. <laughs> Work, serve, have fun. Four years later, that advice still applies but I don't need to tell you that anymore. You have already followed it. Am I worried about you assuming your place in the world? No, I am not. You already have. And so, daughters and sons of Champlain, today you leave alma mater. As you do, you join an outstanding body of professional dedicated alumni, some of whom, like David, are, we, are here with us today. I know that you will continue their leg legacy. In fact, you already have. The class of 2013 has already set a record for the number of seniors who have made a donation to the senior class gift. Thank you. <laughs> the right to join our alumni as honored graduates of Champlain College is yours. You have earned it. The honor and the privilege to be here with you today is mine and indeed that of the entire Champlain community. Good luck, Godspeed to each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are to receive honorary degrees will now be presented to President Finney. Professor Nancy Kerr and Trustee Charles Kittredge will present and escort the first honorary degree candidate, Chris Bojalian. Chris Bojalian. Your award-winning work has influenced the way Vermonters and others look at life, their communities, and the world. We celebrate your compassion, discipline, and enduring vision for capturing the big and small universal moments of life with your family in Lincoln, Vermont. Your voice as an advocate for the homeless, the performing arts, and the disenfranchised has been profound and life-changing for your readers and those whose stories you share. Your investment of time and research in telling the rich stories 
of your own Armenian, Armenian heritage have helped shine a light on a dark period of history. Your keen observations will live on through your best-selling novels and countless essays and provide a shared sense of day-to-day -day life and our place in history to future generations. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Champlain College, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa on this fourth day of May, 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Jay McKee and Trustee Molly Dillon will present and escort the honorary degree candidate, George A. Chaffee. George A. Chaffee. Your leadership and vision in the banking and insurance industries has helped make Vermont the premier U.S. captive insurance domicile and has created thousands of jobs and brought millions in tax revenue to the state. Your service as Vermont Commissioner of Banking and Insurance and your efforts to found and lead the Vermont Insurance Institute at Champlain College has put Vermont at the forefront of training in the specialized field of insurance accounting. You have established yourself as a successful business and community leader, giving generously of your time, expertise, and support to many organizations, including the historic Rokeby Museum. You are an engineer at heart, a builder, a pilot, a dedicated husband, loving father, devoted grandfather. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Champlain College, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Commerce, honoris causa, on this fourth day of May, 2013. Chris Brojalian and I are both surprised and pleased with the honorary degrees that have been presented to us. Uh, it creates thoughtful reflection upon one's own career and, <coughs> and what might have been accomplished. For myself, the lessons learned at the low points never disappeared totally. Not a bad thing since we learn from them. Chris Brojalian is noted for his writing capabilities, capturing the offbeat, quirky habits of people he has known and observed with humor and affection, mostly. Uh, for these efforts, he has garnered numerous awards and a reserved seat at the Oprah Winfrey Show. I am, I am waiting to see a film script emerge from his prolific output. For, my, for myself, I had a seemingly permanent affair with the property liability insurance business and a progression of positions that covered most aspects of the industry from marketing to claims. I languished for several years in the doldrums while, uh, when I concluded that I had dead-ended. Suddenly, <coughs> excuse me, 
I realized that I was familiar with the Vermont Department of Banking and Insurance and curious about the inner workings of a regulatory body. An opening in the Deputy Insurance Commissioner position piqued my interest, which led to being appointed to the post. Within a few years, the commissioner became infected with the inevitable urge to run for governor, uh, producing in me a comparable urge uh, to uh, uh, resulting in my appointment as commissioner in 1980 and early involvement shepherding the captive insurance law through the legislature. Captive insurance uh, will, insurers will be familiar to many of you for the 1,400 plus jobs it has created here as well as the 25 million in annual premium taxes and the economic activity generated in that state. Uh, Vermont with approximately 600 of the world's 5,000 plus active captives is now the world's third largest captive domicile. <clears throat> you are situated here today about to pass through one of life's rites of passage, the granting of your college degree. Further challenges lie ahead, but so far you have faced birth, adolescence, high school, and now college. Uh, the world needs bright, energetic, open-minded people to solve health, climate, social, political, economic, and business challenges. We're in a period of striking technological and communications advances. Uh, the market for your still, uh, skills is, getting, is strong and getting stronger. Best wishes from Chris Ogalian and myself on this day and for your successful journey. Well done, class of 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Bojelian. Greetings, class of 2013. Today is an auspicious day. It is May 4th, National Star Wars Appreciation with a List Day. May the 4th be with you. Here are two critical words of advice that I wish desperately had been given to me back in the Mesozoic period when I was sitting where you are sitting this very morning. Ready? Stay here. <laughs> Let's face it. Do you really want to venture out into a world in which Honey Boo Boo Child and Lindsay Lohan have greater name recognition than our Secretary of State. <laughs> Are any of you looking forward to joining a country in which some states categorize coal mining debris as fill rather than waste so it can be legally dumped into our nation's rivers and lakes? The fact is, the 10 hottest years in human history have occurred in your lifetime. The Arctic ice cap is melting. A quarter of the Earth's species will be extinct in 50 years. And so far, not one single television network has taken me up on my big idea of putting the American Idol finalists on Fear Factor and seeing just what they will eat for a recording contract. <laughs> Our Earth is a great spinning gumball covered with war, famine, disease, and indescribably bad television. <laughs> Moreover, the worst is yet to come. Yet another all-star celebrity apprentice in which Donald Trump finally fires the guy who spray paints his hair. <laughs> How many of you have read a novel in the past 12 months? How many of you have read Two. Well, you are the medieval monks of the digital age. <laughs> Here are some actual statistics about reading in America from the National Endowment for the Arts. 57% of American adults had read at least one novel in the previous 12 months in 1982. In 2008, only 50% had. 
But here's what I find unbelievably interesting. In 2002, only 43% of adults 18 to 24, adults your age, were reading fiction. In 2008, the number had skyrocketed to 52%. And while the biggest thanks for that spike go to a whole lot of teenage vampires, <laughs> thank you, Stephanie Meyer, the fact is your generation is reading. Your generation is turning pages and scrolling through tablets and finding fiction on your phones. My point, if I could trade places with you and sit where you are right now, I would in a heartbeat. I'm kidding, of course. Obviously, I don't really think you should stay here. As, as a matter of fact, I want you all to go forth into the world and get jobs. After all, if you are not working, there will be no social security left for my wife and me when <laughs> We turn 65. So. I can't tell you how happy I was when President Feeney shared with me the employment statistics of the Champlain College class of 2013. I, I sometimes allude to how old and bald I feel on occasion. But the reality is that it wasn't all that long ago that I got to do what many of you are doing today, and that is to wear nothing but Nikes and boxer shorts underneath my commencement robe. <laughs> Actually, that's not completely true. I, I did not wear sneakers to my college graduation. And these days, I actually like to lounge around the house in precisely this get-up Hogwarts commencement chic. And today is your commencement, and you should take great pride in that, in what you have accomplished in your years here at Champlain College. Of course, because this is a commencement, that means you all have to endure hearing from me the most loathsome construction that can be made from any five words in the English language. When I was your age, <laughs> here it goes. When I was your age, I was deciding whether to sue a beer company because in the days before my commencement, a beer keg exploded in the dormitory in the living room that I shared with my three roommates. I was 21 and I saw a world filled with inestimable promise when I gazed upon the shattered glass and the wall and the chair in which I was sitting because now it looked like a serial killer had used it to sharpen his knives. And so while many of my fellow seniors were wasting their time preparing for final exams, my roommates and I were asking a lawyer to represent us in a lawsuit against a company whose annual sales dwarf the state of Vermont's annual budget. We, of course, had the belief in ourselves shared by all college graduates that we could do anything. And so we decided we would represent ourselves. especially after a lawyer told us that his costs would rival a year of college. Besides, we thought it was an open and shut case. One of my roommate's older brothers was a McDonald's refrigerator repairman, and he built us a keg cooler. Students were not allowed to have kegs or keg coolers in their rooms, but because we were seniors, we decided we were exempt. <laughs> One night, someone pumped up the pressure in the keg. He, he pumped it up a lot. The next day, while I was in the easy chair that we had bought for $5 and smelled like feet, the cork in the keg side wanted to pop but couldn't because it was trapped by the metal drum of the keg cooler. And so the contraption exploded. When the dean of students surveyed the damage, he informed my roommates and me that we would have to shoulder the repair costs. Consequently, we wrote the beer company hinting at legal action if they didn't pay for the damage. And we were confident that we had scared the heck out of them. A week later, we saw precisely how frightened they were. They sent a guy our age to meet with us, and the conversation went something like this, beer guy. So the college does not allow kegs or keg coolers in dormitories, right? Us? Well, yeah, beer guy. And, and the cork would have popped out of the keg if you hadn't wedged the illicit keg into your illicit keg cooler, correct? Us? Well, yeah. Beer guy? Okay, bye. <laughs> the, 
the lesson here. Distinguished educator Derek Bach was on to something when he said, if you think education is expensive, just try ignorance. <laughs> Though what I think what he really meant was, if you think education is expensive, just try paying for the damage caused by an illicit, illegal, exploding keg cooler. <laughs> In truth, the problem wasn't that I wasn't reading enough Turgenev or Pushkin or George Eliot when I was your age, because I was. The problem is that I probably don't read enough of them now at middle age. Now, if you do not want to go get high paying jobs so Social Security is something better than an ice cube's chance in hell of existing in a couple of decades, then at the very least, please go out and change the world. No pressure. But this world is so muddied right now, your elders have screwed things up so mind-numbingly, inspirationally, preternaturally badly that you have to try. Heaven knows there are plenty of places to begin. The problem is that genocide, hunger, pollution, terrorism, our nation's absolute inability to initiate meaningful gun control or formulate an energy policy that makes any sense at all seem like such unconquerably high peaks that sometimes it actually does make us all want to cocoon in our tents, to stay here. Let's see, what should I do tonight? Find a replacement for fossil fuel or watch Game of Thrones. It is, it is good. <laughs> Write a poem that will probably never be published, but if it were, might remind people that what binds us is far more important than what separates us, or watch Duck Dynasty, or Dancing with the Stars, or my personal favorite, Dancing with the Duck Dynasty. <laughs> you have to try, despite the fact that inertia is easy, and cynicism is easy, and disregard is easy. It is easy to be jaded, it is easy to be callous, it is easy to be tired. So, here's some advice, and, and this time it's not mine, so it might actually have some merit. It comes from the novelist Ian McEwan, well known for atonement, and Amsterdam, and enduring love. He is immensely gifted and wise, and, and trust me, if he were here with you today instead of me, he would not be telling you tales of exploding beer kegs. The McEwen advice comes through his 19-year-old character, Theo Perron, in his novel, Saturday. Theo is roughly a fictional peer of yours. He's not too much younger than all of you, and, and like so many of you, he's very, very wise. Early into the novel, Theo offers his father an aphorism. The bigger you think, the crappier it looks. When his father asks for his elaboration, he offers, when we go on about the big things, the political situation, global warming, world poverty, it all looks really terrible, with nothing getting better, nothing to look forward to. But when I look small, closer in, then it looks great. So this is going to be my motto. Think small. Indeed, some of you may do great things on a big scale and become MacArthur Fellows, pioneering research scientists, humanitarian leaders. Some of you may actually figure out how to get the road salt off my lawn before Memorial Day. One of you may be the second Vermonter to win the Nobel Peace Prize. There is, however, nothing wrong in changing the world, one child, one family, one neighborhood, at a time. If nothing else, it may keep you sane in a world that more times than not seems bloody certifiable. And will even that be easy? Of course not. But here's what will be easy. You can't possibly do a worse job than my generation. You can't possibly do a worse job than the generations that came before us. When I was sitting where you are, I was surrounded by people who anticipated making documentaries about the downtrodden and starting shelters for the homeless, and writing musicals that would make people forget Andrew Lloyd Webber. Some of them chose instead to become lawyers at very large multinational corporations, 
that don't care a twit about the third world as anything more than a profit center. But not all. Not all. Some really have gone to places where there is famine, where there is poverty, where there is plague, and they haven't gone far. Others are the school teachers and the social workers and the nurses who change the world, one student, one foster child, one patient at a time. We don't read about them in our alumni magazines, but they make a difference in the universe that is incalculable. There's an old Ben and Jerry's bumper sticker that always frustrated me. If it's not fun, why do it? Make no mistake, I love Ben and Jerry's, and I love all that they have done, so I give them a mulligan, a do-over, a pass on this one. The Ben and Jerry's Foundation is a force of nature for good. But the fact is, the world needs you to do lots of things that are not fun. Do you think it is fun to change a patient's catheter? Do you think it's fun to be a victim's rights advocate at the Edward J. Costello Courthouse down on Church Street, meeting day after day with battered women? Do you think it's fun to be Rita Markley of Cots, working 24-7 to champion the homeless and find them shelter? Or Mark Redmond of Spectrum, sleeping outside with some of you at the Unitarian Church to raise awareness of the work his organization does with teens? Or Spectrum's Annie Romanciano, helping people younger than you win their wars with substance abuse. Look, Rita is fun. Mark is fun. Annie is fun. I know them all. And they love their jobs. But continue, as you have here at Champlain, to be brave and accept that life is not an ice cream cone. Moreover, there is something more meaningful than what we do. It's who we are. There's something lovely to be said for knowing that, if nothing else, you can have writ large on your tombstone in 60 years any or all of the following. Tried like hell to be a good dad. Loved her children madly. Was always there for his family. Made time for the people she loved. Walked lightly on the planet. Never left a room without telling her family she loved them, remembered on occasion to say thank you, thank you for the small pleasures that can fill a life, took the time to read Turgenev, was grateful, was decent, was kind. I've sold a pretty good number of books in my lifetime, but the reality is that isn't what will go on my tombstone when I die or represent my legacy. Because it really is the small things that comprise a life, those moments that are transcendent because you are with someone you love or have surprised yourself with a haphazard, completely arbitrary deed that has given someone else, and thus you too, an unexpected moment of grace. That is my daughter's name, incidentally, Grace. Her middle name is Experience, and she goes by Grace Experience. Grace, the gift which we are all given at birth, and experience, that which we earn every day of our lives. All of you have worked hard the past four years. Some of you have. Your professors have told me who hasn't. <laughs> but if you're wearing your cap and gown now, it doesn't matter. You're getting out. You're getting out with a diploma, experience, and a measure of grace. You can't stay here. And I'm grateful, because once more, this great spinning gumball has reason for hope, for renewal, for rejuvenation. And so speaking as a guy from a generation that still doesn't quite get it, I congratulate you. I applaud you. But more than that, I thank you. This is your world now. Live it. Love it. Heal it. God bless you all.
please welcome Provost Robin Abramson. President Finney, as Provost and Chief Academic Officer, I present to you the Class of 2013 as candidates for Associate in Science and Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Bachelor of Fine Arts, and Bachelor of Social Work degrees from Champlain College. President Finney, I present the following candidates for Associate in Science degrees. Garrett Arnold. Farah C. Asuncion. Bianca L. Calkins. Chantel Mary Charrier. Amber Marie Kucher. <laughs> Leslie A. Davis. <laughs> Hannah Joan Gothier. <laughs> Natasha R. Hoskins. Kelsey A. Jenks. <laughs> Diane T. King, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jennifer Lessick. <laughs> Christy Lee Miller, magna cum laude. Kendra L. Powers. <laughs> Catherine Marie Ramsey, cum laude. <laughs> Lauren E. Schoenthaler. <laughs> Melissa Lynn Sirico. Megan L. Wade, magna cum laude. Kevin T. Potter, magna cum laude. Skyler S. Radebach. Rosemary E. Strom, magna cum laude. Christina S. Aceves. Camille E. Adams. Ms. Maruj Aguil Ngawe. Samantha J. Armstrong, cum laude. Andrea A. Asacker. Out of the A. Andrew Vito Ascone, cum laude. Robert G. Ashcraft. <laughs> Ray.
Roy Barron. Kelsey Rose Belcourt. Christian T. Belakowitz. David C. Bender. Cassandra L. Bertrand, magna cum laude. Vincent M. Bebold. Eric A. Bieber. Lucas J. Bilodeau, cum laude. Douglas C. Blackmore, cum laude. Benjamin Bolton. Harry Edward Boltz III. Lindsay A. Bowers. Catherine Brockway. Joseph A. Brown. Michael Butas. Sierra A. Calabrese. Jessica M. Callahan. Kara Rose Kotogio. Dominic J. Cella. Daniela Anna Kristanakis. Abigail E. Clark, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. <laughs> Teresa Kothup. Brandon Scott Cohen. Dana Marie Como. Travis J. Constantino. Emma M. Crockett, magna cum laude. Martin A. Quadra. Sybil E. Cunningham, magna cum laude. Camille K. Dodson, magna cum laude. William E. Dramstead. Kylie B. Drizga. Derek J. Edry. Jovan J. Ellis, magna cum laude. Christopher J. Erickson. Eric John Euchler. Griffin Hart Fargo. Daniel J. Flanagan III. Charles Morgan Foote IV. Ryan J. Ford. Matthew James Forrest. 
Anya Christine Franz, magna cum laude. Michael A. Garris. Charles C. Giancola. Scott B. Gilman. Sarah E. Gingras. Colin Robert Goodno. Heather N. Gorowski. Andrew J. Gould. Emily Elizabeth Gray, cum laude. Casey Joyce Green. Zachary D. Guerrera. Alex J. Gunter. Emily Haggett. James M. Harvey. Jocelyn H. Harvey, magna cum laude. Matthew S. Henneberry. Ryan Alexander Hill. Nathan J. Hipern. Philip R. Holland. Brittany Lee Holman. Matthew S. Eide, cum laude. Haley Kenyon, cum laude. Eric T. Kilbride. Kyle J. Killian. Brian A. Korab. James Lawson. Alexandra D. Lamarick. Andrew K. LaBelle, magna cum laude. Donovan Lefferts. Anthony J. Leon Jr. Evan Francis Litzios. Kyle W. Lopes. Sarah A. Lucia Cum Laude. Elliot J. Lutton. Catherine L. McCall. Jeffrey E. McLean. Alexandra R. Madur, cum laude. David R. Mahoney, magna cum laude. Katagina McCormick. Molly Margaret McGlue. Maxwell Eddie McNeely. Abigail E. Messick. Jacob A. Mott. Emily J. Murnane, magna cum laude. J. 
Jacob B. Murray. Nicholas William Neve. Daniel R. Novick. Matthew L. Nunez. Brenna A. O'Leary. Jackson R. Oler. Kane A. O'Neill. Emily J. Wimet Cum Laude. Grant A. Parker. Richie Parlato. Michael David Perry. Brian T. Patillo. Nicholas R. Puglisi. Jason T. Rauch, summa cum laude. Ryan A. Rubin. <laughs> Timothy A. Scribner. <laughs> Michael T. Sheeran. <laughs> Ryan J. Sheets. Justin Alexander Simon. Amina Serna. Joshua C. Stowe. Andrea L. Sweat, magna cum laude. Christopher T. Seidel. Ryan F. Texera. Jonathan Dominic Testa. Samantha K. Thode. Gina Louise Aldridge Teitelman. Michael D. Tobin. Ryan D. Topping. Donnie M. Torre. Samantha Lee Toe. <laughs> Lucas Donovan Town. <laughs> Courtney A. Triola. <laughs> Charles H. Truslow Jr., cum laude. Deanna Elizabeth Vaida Cum Laude. <laughs> Margaret Van Dyke. <laughs> Xanth D. Veyu. <laughs> Kyle A. Walton. <laughs> Micah Thomas Washburn. Charles K. Weber. 
Patrick Weldon. Rebecca A. Whitley. John W. Wolf, cum laude. Connell L. Wartman. Nicholas D. Wright. Now presenting Division of Professional Studies. Victoria M. Allison, summa cum laude. William J. Blakelock, cum laude. Erica Sue Brooks. <laughs> Lindsay C. Bumps. Kimberly C. Karen, summa cum laude. Benjamin C. Sharavelli. John R. Klingerman, summa cum laude, tied for highest average in the division. Charles E. Cloutier, magna cum laude. Lisa S. Corneau. Tara H. Cota, cum laude. Amber M. Cross. Michael E. Daly, Jr., magna cum laude. Wade A. Daly, summa cum laude. Beverly L. Dupas, cum laude. Alan P. English, cum laude. Odette K. Fon. Chrissy L. Farrington. Carol K. Flint, cum laude. Diana R. Fox, summa cum laude. Bruce J. Goodbread, Jr. Melissa Ann Gundry. Jennifer Wilmot Hahn. <laughs> Jamie S. Herman, summa cum laude. Christopher S. Howard, summa cum laude. Jimena <laughs> Waco. Amanda M. Iaria. Michael A. Janesic, summa cum laude. Donna L. Leclerc, summa cum laude. 
Alicia M. Marcy, summa cum laude. Elise Marie Martin. Jillian Matten. Hannah L. McDonald. Christina M. McLean, summa cum laude. Christopher Allen Mead. Ruth Nyaboke Michoma. Amanda Sage Moody Cum Laude. Danielle N. Nickerson Magna Cum Laude. Kristen L. Port. Vicky Vitali Porter, Magna Cum Laude. Candice M. Richards, Cum Laude. Tammy J. Scarfone. Lusinge Malanyota Sirawayu. Christy Lynn Stetson. Sharon A. Thibault, summa cum laude. Lauren A. Tyler. Kathy A. Vincent, summa cum laude. Heather Elaine Williams, magna cum laude. Jorge A. Walensky, summa cum laude. Robert William Wood. Sumia Yates, cum laude. <laughs> President Finney, I present from the Division of Education and Human Studies the following candidates for Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Social Work degrees. Adriana Lynn Alpaw. Mary F. Anderson, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. <laughs> Brittany A. Beam, magna cum laude. Pavel Bitka. Victor Bitka. Kristen in Blum, magna cum laude. Dylan Andrew Brown. Jonathan E. Carpenter. Christopher J. Cody. Benjamin Philip Francisco, summa cum laude. Allison Hart France, cum laude. Kirsten Marie Grant. Kent D. Huntoon. Sarah A. Irish. Michael Lanza.
Kingsley A. LaPointe. Nicholas Stephen Lappin. Rachel A. Larevere, cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie B. Lash. <laughs> Caitlin Brooke Lavalette. <laughs> Jordan M. LeMay. <laughs> Jackson B. Luffel, Jordan R. Lupian, Jessica Taylor Matey, cum laude, Alexandra K. McGreal, summa cum laude, Benjamin J. McShane, Colby C. Morin. Ryan N. Musso. Basima Mustarlik, cum laude. Laurel E. O'Meara, summa cum laude. William D. O'Neill. Christopher A. Pearson. Well Alyssa L. Perkins Chatterton. Well Tyler Pratt. Yeah. Stephanie L. Provo. Yeah. Ethan A. Rompre. Jenna Grace Roy, cum laude. Edward A. Schlack III. Brittany S. Tenney, summa cum laude. Christopher J. Thibault, summa cum laude. Jessica Walton. Rachel E. Weisberg. Russell V. Whitehead, magna cum laude. David G. Boraz Johnson, magna cum laude. Patrick T. Basharini. Nicole L. Brazil. <laughs> Emily Carrier Burns, cum laude. <laughs> Alice E. Eli. <laughs> Wilson B. Slater. Hannah L. Tooth, magna cum laude. Elise White. President Finney, I present from the Division of Information Technology and Sciences the following candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. Mr. Brian S. Arsenault. Andrew D. Auclair. Daniel Jefferson Barnett. 
Anthony N. Blake. Travis S. Blumenthal. Kyle A. Brooks. Christopher J. Bruff, summa cum laude. Robert J. Buckley. Gregory R. Burns. Christine M. Casey. Kristen Lee Cormier, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. Yeah. Ian T. Cuban. Jordan C. Deal. Daniel J. Doonan. Robert N. Drury. Stephen J. Everett, Jr. Mason L. Fiore. Ethan Graham Fleischer, cum laude. Derek W. Franz. Matthew Frost. Matthew T. Gefeller. Spencer T. Goddard, magna cum laude. Allison Marie Hera, summa cum laude. Mary A. Hughes. Nicholas J. Kozierski, magna cum laude. Alexander P. Langlois. Michael A. Lepore. Joseph J. Latorno, cum laude. Kyle R. Marchev, magna cum laude. Kyle J. McLeod. Frederick J. Morey. Elias J. Rans Schleifer. Adam L. Reed. Brian F. Rowe. Joshua A. Rubin. Justin L. Ryder. <laughs> Catherine Margaret Stam. <laughs> Kyle M. Sullivan, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jacob William Swift. Stephen W. Tanzi, cum laude. <laughs> Alex D. Tardif, summa cum laude. <laughs> Alexander D. Texera. <laughs> Stephen David Thorne, Jr. Mr. Neil P. Torpy. Yeah. 
Aaron H. Trzinski, summa cum laude. Jake E. Viens. Paul J. Wallace. Ryan Thomas Warner. David Owen Frederick Watkins, magna cum laude. James R. Watson. Michael J. Wheeler. Brian M. Zwicker. <laughs> President Finney, I present from the Robert P. Stiller School of Business the following candidates. <laughs> for Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration degrees. Casey Arena. <laughs> Catherine Arnoldi. Jared B. Badger. Nicole H. Baker, magna cum laude. Samantha J. Beebe, magna cum laude. George Taylor Bentz. Shelby D. Bermani. David M. Blakeman McLean. Amanda R. Blanchard. Jacob V. Brindler. Ben S. Burrows. Scott D. Campbell. Kevin J. Cannon. Waldo M. Champlin Scannell. Ethan A. Clokey. Parker W. Cohn. Amber Marie Couto. Michael C. Crow. Matthew C. Crowley. Sonny M. Day. John S. DeMichael. Oliver L. Dimmick. John P. Desmond Cumulade. Laura M. DeRochers. Nicole D. Eggert. Victoria Page Feller, magna cum laude. Jeffrey R. Farrow. Richard D. Fitzpatrick, summa cum laude. Joseph S. Fortuno II. Heather L. Francoeur.
William J. Fercolo. Quillen P. George. Nathaniel J. Getzo. Jeffrey M. Dexter Goggin. David M. Gormley. Jeremy P. Gravel. John C. Haley. Kelsey S. Hall. Margaret Elizabeth Davenport Harris. Melanie A. Hess. Ryan A. Hull. Cody Ryan Hurst. Kristen Mariel Hutter. Margaret E. Irving. Dragon Jagger. Roger E. Johnson. Lindsay M. Kieser. Ashlyn N. Kidder. Maxwell C. King. Dylan F. Lane. Kathleen Jane LeClaire. Mariah E. Legault. Benjamin E. Lemaire. Thomas L. Liga II. Gregory S. MacDonald. Jennifer L. Martin, summa cum laude, highest average in the division. Donald H. Maynard, Jr. Rourke E. McVicker. Kristen Alana Miro. Adam A. Miller. Brian A. Orn. Isabella S. Panero. David S. Paquette, Jr. Joseph Armand Perron, magna cum laude. Tyler J. Perrot. Jack Paulus. Kelly M. Pratt. Carl E. Priddle. Austin L. Reed. Robert J. Regan. <laughs> Kyle Rice.
Brett W. Rogers. John H. Sawchak, cum laude. Brittany L. Sheeby. Colby M. Sears. Christopher A. Sexton. Andrew W. Schaubach. Shinmi Shinda. Madeline L. Smith. Michael J. Sokol. Brian P. Summers. Brittany L. Souls, cum laude. Tallulah Poppy Bright Spark. Samuel A. Spencer. Sadie Elizabeth Stone. Raven P. Taher. Brendan Michael Tanner. Nicole C. Tetro, magna cum laude. Julie A. Thomas, magna cum laude. Cody J. Trombley. Tyler C. Yuri. Connor Vassar. Rock W. Vitale, cum laude. Viet Vo. John J. Weed. Samantha D. Winchell, cum laude. Alexander P. Wolf. Jesse R. Yuskovich. Nicholas A. Caruso III. Cum laude. David J. Junker, magna cum laude. Will the class of 2013 please rise for the conferring of degrees? of Education of the State of Vermont and the Trustees of Champlain College as President, I declare that you are entitled to your associate and baccalaureate degrees with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, and further, I certify that you are fully prepared to take your rightful place in the world of commerce and business. You may now turn your mortarboard tassels from right to left. Congratulations.
Immediately follow. Hello. Immediately following, I invite you to join President Finney for a reception under the tent on the back lawn of Roger H. Perry Hall. Please join us in singing Champlain College's alma mater, led by Becky Peterson and Kayla Hedman.